Hey guys, it's Jay here. Welcome to part 3 and the final part of this Coliseum build at Starlight Driving. A video for a long time I didn't think I'd be able to bring to you because of the frame rate issues I've been having here. But after fast travelling from Merc Water to pick up some purified water that I can then spend at Diamond City, I've found I can walk about a lot easier and I think it's because I put some switches in and the lights are all controllable now from inside the stadium which is why if we look around it's in complete darkness but since last time I've managed to add these signs that you see on the outside and I've glitched them into place basically using the rug glitch on top of some shack staircases to get the lights into position but there it is now in complete darkness and here's a ticket office. Incidentally, it's only the outside that seems to cause problems. I did a little test on this before I started recording. The lighting inside the stadium's fine, and it seems to be the light boxes that I've added that cause all the problems. And here's a switch that controls the light boxes. But we'll get onto that one later, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Again, since last time in here, we've added a bar area which we've rug glitched into place, you can see on the left there. And it's sticking a little far forward, but I've done that so that the bar sign's visible, as you can see now. So there's a nice little place for them to come when you come on to the stadium itself. And upstairs, there's two fusion generators. And again, using the rug, I've managed to get the two intersecting in there, so they're hidden away nicely. And just shut this behind us. And I said we'll come back to that switch, I don't want to mess with it now. Because there is a Deathclaw light box up at the top there. If you watch the short video you would have seen it. And all under here is controlled by the same switch. You can see as we enter the stadium now, I've built these steps permanently by intersecting concrete blocks again. So we've done away with the little uh, stairway that we had leaning up to it. And inside now, we're just in complete darkness. Apart from the Soul Survivor's balcony up at the top there, where I've got a couple of candles lit up. But last time I tried this, as I said, the lights inside the stadium didn't seem to cause any problems. It was the lights outside. So over here, we've got a switch, and we'll just give it a go. I've probably cursed myself now, and the screen rate will drop completely. And it's not moving at the moment. Oh, there we go. Yeah, and it's absolutely fine. I mean, this is on the PS4, so it's not going as fast as a PC would, but this is quite good compared to what you'll see later on. So there it is lit up now, and we're on the lower tier at the moment. You can see I've just put one row of seats here, built up on a couple of wooden shack floors. And building them up allows you to see over the fence when you're actually sat down here. So you get a good view of the arena. And then further up, you can see the upper tier. And I've done the same kind of layout there, but there's a few more seats at the top. We'll go into the cage before we go up there, though. And again, I've just built this uh, little path leading down. It winds around, but you've got to make use of the room you've got. We've got a fire pit in the centre of the arena. Our death claw cage. And there's a way out if you make it. What I find funny is, I had a Savage Deathclaw to begin with, and now I've got an Albino Deathclaw here. So, I'm expecting a Glowing Deathclaw next time, perhaps. I'm pretty sure it's an Albino. Yep, yeah, hello. I forgot I had the HUD opacity turned down. You'll have to um, believe me, it's an Albino. So let's go and have a look at the upper tier. We come up these steps here, and as you can see as I was talking about, with these settlers in the way, it's the same layout of aircraft seats. We've got a two or two, 
and then we've got five at the back all the way around at each one of these booths they're numbered so you've got the green seats red blue yellow purple and then orange and they all run from 1 to 39 the fun that I have placing all those seats and whites I can't even begin to tell you that was nothing compared to placing every piece of floor section though all the way around and trying to get that balcony in afterwards because that was an afterthought and afterthoughts are never easy to fit in when you're building with concrete in this style but you can see they run all the way around and the only way to access that balcony now is at the rear end of the stadium so We'll take one last loop because we won't be coming back in here. We'll go to the back now where I've put an elevator in. And I know they can be glitchy. I'm going to give you a tip for them elevators. You can see we've put some statues as well in the openings and got them lit up. And all around the stadium on the outside when I get past this shed is all flanked by heavy laser turrets. So that's providing a nice bit of defence. The elevator's in there, but just before we go, we'll have a quick look at the settlers' area, because they're back here, running this little farm. And there's plenty of food for them. We've got the quitting time siren. And I've just made a bit of use of the build that was already here by putting some beds in these little bits at the back, under the screen. And they've got a cooking station and sitting area out here. But we'll go up to the elevator now, and the balcony. Now I know a few people have troubles with these elevators, and indeed I did at the beginning. The buttons tend to glitch and you can't reach them, they just end up floating in mid-air with these four story ones. The advice is, don't touch these floor buttons. It seems that when you call an elevator using them, it causes them to glitch. But if you just stick to these buttons on the inside, they're absolutely fine, I've had no problems with mine since. So here we are at the top, and you can see I've built this little area now, just at the, to get into the Coliseum, sorry. And we've got a guard with a sniper rifle there, stationed at all times. And now we can wander in ourselves. And this lower section, this is for any of the companions that come along with me. They can just stand here, and they've got a good view over. And the Vault Dweller, he's stationed a little bit further up in the highest seat. And we've got an even better view from up here. You can see that looking out now. You can see the statues as well in every opening. And down there's our arena. And I've used one of the thrones from the Kiddie Kingdom as well. It seemed apt to have up here. And all these switches, they control the main arena lights. And I'm going to try switching a few of these off. Just to show you. Not the cage door. And the floodlights. And probably the cage lights as well, to be honest, at the end here. Right, we'll just have one quick loot now before we head back down. You can see the difference that those lights make, having them on and off. And it's just the essential areas now that are lit up, so people can find the seats in the stadium before everything starts. But we'll head back down to the front of the stadium, arena, coliseum, whatever we're calling it. And I'll show you the big flaw with this build nowadays. And it'd be easy to sort, but I'm loath to remove anything that I've built. I've not seen another Deathclaw light box built by anybody else. And that seems to be what causes the problems. It's not so much the lights in the ticket office, as it is the light boxes that I've added. So you can see, we're at the front, and the frame rate's not too bad. Again, we're on the PS4, not a PC. But unfortunately, when we flick this switch, I mean, it looks a lot nicer because it comes to life again. You can see the statues, they're all lit up. The ticket office is lit up, and there's a Deathclaw light box lit up. But I'm actually trying to move at this moment in time. Well, even walk around. And you can just see the frame rate. It's, it's really struggling, let's put it that way. Those lights should all be flashing a lot quicker and they're not doing. And I think the most obvious giveaway is if you look at the spotlights on the side of the projector itself. 
at how slow they're going along. But without them, it looks very plain at the front, so I've put the switches in instead, and that's how I'm getting round it. But as soon as the switches have been activated, then it doesn't return to normal, even if you turn all the lights off, it just doesn't return to normal. So this is it now, I'm going to have to call a video here and try and get away from the stadium to get one last look at it. If you get far enough away, towards the back of the stadium where there's not many lights, or these hills will head for in fact, then the screen rate returns to normal and it's playable again. It's just as soon as you try going into the stadium or anywhere near it, it really drops off. Come on. There we go, I think we're back to normal again now. So we'll just come up here and take one last look at it lit up. And I said this is a final part now and a bit that I didn't think I'd be able to bring you. But we're calling it a day here at the Coliseum. If I do anything else, I'm in fear of the game crashing, so I can't put in the little market outside like I was talking about. Or an arcade for Nuka World. I'll have to find somewhere else to use them. But until next time, I've been Jay. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you've enjoyed the build, then give the video a like. Each one's appreciated. But until next time, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.